understand the mechanics of uh, the Russian army's attack on the Ukrainian army and the current state of battle, I'm joined by General uh, Sayyid Atta Hasnain, one of India's finest military thinkers. He's written a detailed piece on his assessment of the battle as it stands. So I hope to talk to him about it over the next few minutes. General Hasnain, welcome. I enjoyed reading your piece this morning. And I'm very curious to understand from you what the Russian army you think is trying to do. They're trying some very high-risk maneuvers like sending paratroopers, heliborn into the military airport near Kyiv, then discovering that they weren't able to hold on. Now we are learning from the second biggest city, Kharkiv. Once again, they went in, claimed victory. Uh, now the Ukrainians are saying they've pushed them back. What are the Russian army personnel thinking? What's their plan? See, Rahul, uh, the Russians obviously initiated everything from a position of strength. And there's a perception of position of strength. They have not been able to establish a favorable air situation, let alone an air superiority. For these kind of offensive operations, you always require air superiority or if nothing else, a favorable air situation. That has not happened. Why not? They have, gone they have far better yeah. air systems, yet yes. four days into the war, they don't have air superiority. Why is that? That exactly is the question. Now, to my mind, perhaps the Russians have... Uh, calibrated so far they've taken a bold decision all right what mr putin has done but they don't want to become the villains of the world completely and perhaps therefore they're holding back on air power no this is why whatever you're seeing at the moment is a calibration on the ground one lakh thirty thousand troops all around all around ukraine may not be sufficient to achieve their political and military aims that is my assessment they will probably have to bring in reinforcements and that is very evident from the fact that they went into the kiev airport there's a ding dong battle there counterattacks have taken place and obviously there has been no link up now just getting doing a heliborn operation or a special forces operation without catering for a link up on through the ground is absolutely suicidal and that's exactly what is happening at kiev Perhaps Kharkiv is also suffering the same. They've sent it. No, but this is very basic, sir. What you're saying, you send in your special forces, then ensure that you've got uh, ground forces to come and back whatever advances the special forces make. That's uh, battle planning 101. The Russian army, institutionally and historically, is one of the most uh, famous armies of the world. Why are they making such basic mistakes? I don't know when was the last time the Russians really fought a conventional battle of this kind. We used to hear stories of the operational maneuver groups of the Cold War at that time, and we used to, we used to be actually virtually copying uh, the kind of uh, operational maneuvers that they used to do. But today I'm a little suspicious after the last three days of seeing that it doesn't seem the Russians have thought through this, unless the Russians are, cal as I said, calibrating a little too much. They, have, they are looking at objectives which, for which they need to deploy troops. And they are not deploying enough troops. They are not deploying hard power, perhaps, sufficiently yet. What do you make of the Ukrainian army's ability to withstand these attacks? Right now, there is a high level of josh. Uh, the president leading the way, civilians uh, coming to the uh, aid of uh, the Ukrainian army. But militarily and in terms of weapons and training the Russian army far superior, how long... On the basis of what we can see so far, do you think the Ukrainian army will be able to hold out? The Ukrainian army will probably be able to hold out on the in the built-up areas. You see, getting into a built-up area, uh, making the initial entry is a very, very difficult thing. It's fraught with danger. Lots of troops are required because you are in the open and your adversary uh, is uh, under cover inside the built-up areas. And therefore, that entry is difficult. You may remember the Battle of Mosul, which took place in Syria. Other battles there which took place, similarly two and a half, three months of, of uh, absolute slogging before those, those built-up areas could fall. So the Ukrainians are, in, are on the defensive. They're doing well. They have, they've selected their positions uh, very, very adroitly. And therefore, I, I, do, I do foresee that they will be able to hold on for some time unless you suddenly bring in a preponderance of Russian hard power, missilery, rocketry, lots of artillery fire. Uh, the Russians are known to be doing this. If you remember in 1969, that's the long back at that. The way they, they plastered the Chinese, the PLA at Demansky Island on the Urus Usuri River, that was a great example. If they do start doing those kind of things and have no remorse about the civilian casualties which will flow in hundreds, then obviously the Russians are going to 
plaster them completely and probably go run over the Ukrainians in the next four or five days. But I don't think, I think the Russians are calibrating a lot. They're careful about how they are going to come out of this. At the end of, the, of this war, it's not as if Russia is a, is a world of its own. It has to still stay a part of this world. And therefore, the Russians, the perception management of the world is also an important aspect.